Jay and Beattie. I have a client that uh, had asked me a question. She has a dog, a Rottweiler, with um, a problem in its spine and wanted to know a little bit more about uh, spondylosis deformans. Well, so I need to talk a little bit about this because um, their veterinarian did call it spondylitis, which uh, it's kind of confusing because there's two different things that we're talking about here. We're talking about spondylosis deformans versus discospondylitis. And so the comparison of the two um, will then hopefully uh, help my client and help you understand um, what the difference is and, and how we should treat each, each disease. So let's start out with the spondylosis deformans. According to allopathic veterinary medicine or your normal veterinary medicine, it's an incidental finding, meaning that it just happens to be there. They just find it. Uh, by the formation of new bone growth on the lateral and ventral aspect of the vertebra close to a disc space. And it causes no significant medical or neurologic issues, except for a small amount of decreased range of motion in this spinal segment in which the spinal spondylosis deformans is at. So there's, and this, I'll explain this easy, more to you when, uh, when you see uh, a radiograph, I'll show you. Um, wh what we're actually talking about. Now from a chiropractic aspect, it is completely significant because it is a contributing factor for lack of movement in a spinal segment. And it also shows that there's been a chronic lack of movement. So as the joints doesn't move as much, um, has chronic issues in that area, the body tries to stabilize it by forming this new bone growth. So that's spondylosis deformans. Most of the time, most veterinarians don't treat it, don't do anything with it because it's just, they just find it there. There's dogs that don't seem to have any problems that they take an x-ray for some reason and they see it on there and it's no big deal. So the opposite though, not opposite, but a, a different condition which is similar but uh, yet is more of a problem is called discospondylitis. And this is inflammation of the disc and the adjacent end plates possibly caused by infection or trauma. There is lysis or um, bony degeneration of the end plates of the vertebrae and new bone formation is, is found as well. Patients that have this suffer from spinal pain and possibly some neurologic deficits because it's actually affecting the disc and affecting the nerves in that area. Uh, and there's a bunch of inflammation in there. From a chiropractic aspect, same problem. It's a contributing factor to lack of movement in a spinal segment and also shows chronic lack of movement in that spinal segment. But to the point where it actually there is some uh, disc problems as well, causing neurologic damage. So let me let me show you the difference between the two of these here. Um, the first one is uh, the spondylosis deformans. You can see this is this is the um, this is a normal joint. This is a normal joint. This one is not, and neither is this one. But if you look here at, at the edges of the disc, so here's the spinal canal, which the spinal cord runs, all right? And each one of these white things is the bones of the vertebrae, each vertebrae. And here's where the disc resides in between each one of these spaces. As you can see, there's some bone formation down underneath here, right in this section right here. And, but you can see this is still normal on the sides, it's just the same as here. This looks normal. This is spondylosis deformans. Most of the time, most veterinarians would call this, cause, call this a incidental finding. For me, doing chiropractic work, I would look at this and say, oh, there's some stiffness going on in through this area here. I need to do and see what the integrity of this joint is and want to make sure that this, these two vertebrae are moving as well as they can. As opposed to that would be, um, you would be looking at uh, discospondylitis. All right, discospondylitis, here, let me do this because this is much easier. Discospondylitis is this vertebrae right here. You can see it has bony growth underneath here, but you can see also here, this does not look like this. Okay, these are the normal disc space. Here's the same thing, vertebral bodies. This is where the spinal cord resides. Each one of these spaces has a disc in it. All right, you can see spondylosis deformans here because this is normal looking space. I mean, the space is a little narrowed here, 
but there's no degeneration on the edges of the bone like it is through here. You can see there's a lot of degeneration in what we call bony lysis. There's like holes in this bone right in through this area. This is discospondylitis. I would expect this dog to be painful in this area right here and possibly causing some neurologic deficits because you can see some of the bone is pushing up into, into this area here, into the spinal canal, making this area narrow. Okay, so this is discospondylitis, and this here is, is um, spondylosis deformans. So there's two different, two different diseases here. So now let's look at my client's dog. Here's the Rottweiler here. Okay, so the, disc, the space that we're considering is this one right here. You can see that there's definitely bony growth underneath here, okay? But the space here looks the same as this one here. It's normal. So this is spondylosis deformans. This is not going to be of, of clinical significance to a, a traditional veterinarian. To someone like myself, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm getting better movement in here. This tells me that this is a chronic area of, of, of lack of movement or subluxation as far as chiropractic terminology is concerned uh, in this area. And uh, knowing this dog, yeah, this certainly does have, this, this dog does have this problem in this uh, upper lumbar region here. Uh, I've seen this in... Uh, in this dog on numerous occasions so this is just a problem stress area here so I need to focus more attention on creating this problem and in correcting this problem so and going back to that so let's talk about uh, here let's go here um, as far as treatments so for treatment spondylosis deformans most of the time nothing chiropractic treatments or canine rehab and what we're looking for there is to try and increase the range of motion of the spine and make sure that the spine is moving moving better and the dog's more comfortable just from that from improving movement in there. Discospondylitis though however there's inflammation and pain so we're going to use some anti-inflammatories whether you use traditional or natural anti-inflammatories doesn't matter obviously the Traditional ones are a little bit more potent, but also have a little bit more side effects. Um, in some cases, though, if the dog is pretty painful, you're going to have to use traditional, traditional uh, anti-inflammatories. Um, otherwise, we treat with acupuncture, chiropractic, canine rehab, Chinese herbs, nutraceuticals, many different things to help with the pain and help with um, the uh, spina, the, the neurologic flow uh, a lot better. Make sure the neurologic is is moving is going as well. So for more information about dog health, especially for dog movements or lack thereof, take a look at my website, Dog Kinetics. And thank you very much. This is Dr. Dan Beattie. Um, hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much.